In this lecture, we are going to take an example of FMEA application from manufacturing. If you're not from manufacturing, you could skip this, but I would suggest that you still go through this lecture because there's not much of technical stuff here and you would surely be able to appreciate how FMEA is applied in different industries. So here is a completed FMEA and I'm going to briefly walk you through this FMEA. I want you to put a little bit of imagination cap here because you don't understand the process which has been done here. It's not your own process, but I've taken a very simple process that any of us can appreciate or relate. We're talking about a scenario where we have a palletizing conveyor. So there is a conveyor in a production environment and there are bottles, maybe beverages or juice bottles, which are getting packed in the conveyor. And what's happening is these bottles are slipping down, they are dashing with each other and they are breaking when they are moving in the conveyor. So that's a potential failure mode which leads to loss of production. It leads to other issues because when the beverage spills over, it spoils the conveyor because that's made out of either metal or plastic. So the idea is how do we reduce this particular failure mode? And this is just one of the failure modes in the palletizing conveyor stage. There could be multiple failure modes. There could be a failure mode where the conveyor gets stuck. There could be a failure mode where conveyor makes a noise. There could be a failure mode where the bottles are coming inverted. So there could be multiple failure modes, but I'm talking about just one failure mode. If you look at this failure mode, Always remember that when you build an FMEA, it's like a tree. So for a given failure mode, you might have multiple effects. There could be effects on the production, the manufacturing, aspects such as production, quality, delivery, safety. So some of these factors may have impact. It could also have impact on the internal customer. That is the next stage of production because the conveyor is taking the items from your shop to another shop. It can also have impact on the end customers. So evaluate the impact of this from all those stakeholders. Now here they're saying that one, because of this, the production could get delayed. Let's say a bottle bro breaks and it gets stuck somewhere between the conveyor and it's jamming the conveyor. So Possibly that's a failure mode. The bottle jamming is actually a failure mode. We should actually put that as a failure mode. So we have put various effects and for each of those effects, we have used the scale that we talked earlier and assigned severities. So 10 means highly severe and one means least severe. And here we talk about injury. And so we have associated 10 to that. So a glass bottle has broken. It's not a plastic or a pet bottle, but it's a glass bottle. So it's resulted in injury to the employee. Possible causes. Employee was not wearing gloves. The lubricant jet, which was supposed to lubricate the conveyor had got blocked or the pressure of the, the lubricator was quite low. Now you would know this if you're working in this shop, when you do a brainstorming, when you use a fishbone diagram to brainstorm on all possible reasons for why the failure mode could occur. Remember, we're not now brainstorming on the effect. Effect is the outcome. Failure mode is the mechanism by which the failure has happened. Cause is usually associated with the failure mode. So we're going back and saying that why would the bottle slip? Why would the bottle dash and break in the conveyor? We get various reasons here. For each of those reasons, we go back to our history sheet where we have logs of breakdown and we try to say how many times each of those failures or each of those causes have occurred. Employee not wearing the gloves. How often do you see that? Usually, if there is a risk register or if there is a risk audit or if there is some kind of data collection that happens in the organization, 
that can serve as a source of data for this. If you don't have any of this, then you need to go by voting, democratic voting by involving all the people who are working in that uh, team or at least the team leaders. Again, for occurrence, higher the occurrence, higher the value, lower the occurrence, lower the value. Then for each of those causes, there could be multiple controls or checkpoints which are there in the system, current controls. Let's take the example of the employee wearing the gloves. The only control that we have is that we have educated him, we have given him the gloves and the supervisor is monitoring this manually when he's going up and down. So that's a weak control, that's not a strong control. So because it's a weak control, I would give it a nine. On the other hand, for a, a current control like the pressure control valve is in place for lubricant pressure being low, the last item, you could actually use some kind of an automation to alert that the pressure is low. It can in fact even stop the entire line if the pressure goes beyond a particular value. So the control mechanism there is pretty good. So you are giving is the least value. The RPN, as you know, is just a product of severity, occurrence and detection and you get the values. As I mentioned earlier, whenever the RPN is higher, then you try to take an action. And then there follows the residual risk. So after you have taken the action, what is the residual risk in the process? So re-evaluate the values of severity, occurrence and detection and that goes into the revised RPN. So this is how FME is performed in manufacturing. Now with updations in AI AG, which I talked about earlier and I would cover that in detail, some of these aspects such as how you rate them, how you compute the RPN, is RPN at all important? Some of those aspects have changed and I think those changes have been well thought through. So it makes sense for us, even if you're not from the automotive industry, to understand those changes and maybe even apply those changes in our own industry. Okay, with that note, I'm going to wrap up this lecture. In the next, we will take an example from banking and talk about that.